Hi, everybody. Uh, this is your lesson from myfreeactingclass.com on today, uh, Wednesday, January the 20th. My name is Michael Bean. I am an acting teacher. I run Biz Studio. I've been teaching film and TV acting for almost 20 years now. And uh, if you go to the links section on myfreeactingclass.com, you will find a link to the video archive of all of these past lessons. You will also find uh, links to resources, including a 40 something page download called the Confidence on Camera Handbook and a PDF called How to Get a Talent Agent. You know, and those are free downloads. I'm trying to make this as accessible as humanly possible. So if you haven't checked out the resources, they're like more free stuff, you know, on that website, please do. Also, props to the folks who sent us uh, tapes yesterday. Uh, Tuesdays are self tape review. So uh, even a single line of dialogue, you send it in and we will review it uh, publicly. And if I don't have time to review it publicly, I'll send you notes uh, just like I did yesterday. So uh, now today we're talking to the fabulous Julia Sarah Stone. I'm going to show you her on IMDb quickly so you can just see how amazing she is. Uh, the here, Julia Sarah Stone was born on da, 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 to Vancouver, BC. Uh, and you can see a bunch of fancy pictures of her. Oh, there we go. See, this is the Julia that I uh, knew initially, you know, and then we've got you know, sort of progressively, you know, older and fancier pictures. Uh, Aftermath, uh, which was a series that uh, she was a, one of the, the recurring characters on. A little post-apocalyptic action. I confess, Julie, I, I didn't see it, you know, but I, I read the scripts. I just really liked the scripts, um, particularly when it was you know, auditioning. Uh, the uh, You can check her out on IMDb. There's a bunch of things here, uh, a bunch of things for 2020. So one of the things that will be interesting to ask Julie about today is you know, what is it like working on set in a pandemic? Uh, I think every time we hear somebody talk about that, you know, it uh, helps it feel more possible and, uh, and helps it feel easier. And there is a lot of production in DC. Uh, we've got uh, where street lights going right. So uh, the you know eight episodes. If you see something like this on IMDb, this means that she is like a really solid recurring character. Uh, right, same thing here. Aftermath, all thirteen episodes. Right, if she's in all thirteen episodes, you know, then it means that she's one of the very small handful of people who the story is all about. Uh, and then we sort of scroll all the way back to uh, two thousand and one. Yeah, you know, and we see or two thousand nine. Uh, there's a short film. Two thousand eleven. You know, uh, this is sort of her first big gig uh, in a an independent feature, you know, and uh, short films, TV movies, and then she starts you know, uh, working professionally after that. You know, the right. So the this first recurring uh, character here on the killing you know, is four years after the first short film uh, that she did that was. You know, sort of together enough you know, to uh, have it listed on IMDb. You know, so just, I think some of that for, for reference uh, is really good. Ah, and here's that demo reel. I was looking in the wrong place for it. You know, so a uh, little clip of Julia's demo. Guess you were hungry after all. No. Not even for mom's meatloaf? She's not my mom. Elizabeth. I'm adopted, aren't I? How come you never told me? Okay, so this is you know, five minutes long. We're just gonna you know, bounce around. It's a very bit. well known lycanthropy inhibitor. Everyone knows that. Are you making fun of me? Are you making fun of me? Uh, and then, just for fun, you know, I mean, obviously, we could continue to you know jump around oh, here, with Julia. Yeah. Didn't you love him? Shut up. What's happening to you, Gray? What are you talking about? Ever since she came into your life, you've changed. That's a Did you ever different. stop to think about what she gets? And then, uh, I'm not, I, I actually didn't have a chance to review this before class. Yeah. So <laughs> let me see. You know what? Uh, let's, uh, let's skip that one. All right. Uh, and so, without any further ado, uh, Julia, do you uh, have your camera such that you can turn it on so people can look at your face? There she is. Uh, and so, everybody, this is Julia Sarah Stone. Hi. 
Uh, Julia, thanks so much for making time. You know, how yeah, of course. It's, it's so great to, uh, to talk to you again. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> how are you? How is 2021 treating you so far? Uh, it's been a roller coaster for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, on the one hand, it's been kind of nice to not uh, be traveling because, um, I mean, uh, 2019, I, I traveled a lot and I was, um, I was away on set for uh, a lot of the year. So it, it's, it was nice to be um, at home quite a bit in 2020. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling definitely like the itch to get back on set for sure. That makes really sense. Um, and uh, the and so working on set in quarantine in 2020, um, how what was that experience like? Yeah, you know, why don't we start there? Yeah, um, my IMDb is a little bit misleading actually because uh, a lot of those projects that say 2020, I actually worked on uh, in the previous years. Uh, uh. Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of those came out in 2020, um, premiered at festivals and stuff. But uh, I only worked on, uh, I worked on two very brief projects in 2020. Um, one of them was a short film and uh, we shot that up in Lytton, BC. So it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't so, uh, so high risk in like a major city. Yes. Um, and then the other one was actually a, a remote, uh, remote shooting. So we shot that over Zoom, which was a very, uh, very interesting experience. <laughs> interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Found them. Um, the, okay. Um, and so one of the things that I want to start uh, in terms of the conversation, you know, is just like, can you give us an overview of, um, kind of your uh, your journey as an actor? I mean, half an hour certainly is not enough time to do any part of it justice. Like we could, we could zoom in on any one part of it, you know, and you could spend half an hour there really easily. Uh, but one of the things that I would love for people to take away from this is kind of some of your main takeaways. I mean, you've been doing this since mm -hmm. you were, you know, um, what, like nine or 10, you know? And so over the last you know, uh, dozen years, you know, the, some of the key things that you've learned as though you were going back and talking to your own, you know, like 10 year old stuff. And you're like, okay, here, let me break it down. Like, I can't tell you everything because I only got half an hour, but like, you know, here's some key things. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I can talk about um, a little bit about how I got started. Um, I, I actually, I just took a, a theater class um, when I was very little, when I was about six, uh, and I loved it so much that I just want, kept wanting to go to that theater class. And then um, that turned into uh, other types of acting classes, uh, screen acting, um, going to Michael's class a lot <laughs> for many years. Um, yeah, and uh, I would say um, that that part of it, um, the classes and the training, that is something that uh, I always, I always talk to, um, new actors about that being something that I really value and um, something that I I always, uh, I, I've never thought of it as something where, um, where it's like a degree where you go to school for a set number of years and then you get your degree and then you're done your training and then you can just work. Um, it's not very, it's not quite like that with acting. Um, in my opinion, I, I feel um, as, as an actor, as an artist, um, I always want to be working on that. I, I always want to be um, exploring the the new paths and the the forward momentum that I can make in in my uh, in my skill. So um, yeah, the the training has been uh, very consistent. I'm I'm in a, an acting class right now. Um, I haven't ever stopped. <laughs> um, I don't intend to stop anytime soon. But um, yeah, and uh, in terms of. What was the other thing? Like what I would what I would tell my younger self? Totally. Um, and I just want to jump in for one second there. Do you remember at what point along that process you started thinking of yourself as an artist and not just somebody who's mm. taking acting classes? Yeah. Um, I would say uh, a few years into it, I I started to. Um, I can kind of I can kind of identify a, a point in time where my process um, went a little bit deeper, 
than it ever had before. And I started to, uh, to become so invested in my characters and uh, very uh, immersed in, in their world. Um, and it's also around that time when uh, I started to um, really understand what it meant to connect with my scene partner. And um, when, when, I think of, when I think of the word artist, I think of somebody who creates, um, somebody who like makes something out of nothing. And that's, that's what I think the magic is about any kind of art form, um, acting included. Mm. And uh, what I think makes an actor uh, a creative uh, person in, in the process of, of filmmaking or, or um, telling a story is when you're connected in a way that those impulses can come up and something unexpected happens and you surprise yourself by what you're feeling or what you're doing or, or what you, how you respond to something that happens in the scene. Um, and I think it's around the time that I started experiencing that, that I, I saw it as something different and something um, a little bit uh, more meaningful to me and fulfilling. Um, Cause that's, that's also what I find most fun about it is, is that uh, following the impulses, being connected to your scene partner, kind of uh, playing with somebody else in the scene. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I, that also was kind of the, the point where I, um, I realized that I wasn't ever, like I, 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 I wasn't booking stuff yet. I wasn't booking a lot yet. So I, I didn't know if I was going to be um, any, any kind of, if I was gonna have any kind of success as an actor. Uh, but I realized at that point that even if I didn't book anything that I would still do it. Um, and I think that was kind of the point that I was like, okay, this is like, this is a, a real thing for me. Um, yeah. And that's, that's kind of where it started. Um, the, one of the exercises that I, I have continued to use over the years, you know, since um, working with you is the one with the individual lines of dialogue, you know, where people, like people take that and do it on the camera. And so um, Jan in January, I've introduced this exercise to everybody in the free acting class and encourage them to practice at home. And so in, uh, yesterday I was like um, telling them the story of uh, when I saw you start to practice that almost every day at home, you know, and, and how uh, back, I mean, then this was really like a full decade ago now, you know, so mm -hmm. you, you've studied with everybody you could and learned everything you can. Uh, like I love what you said about training, um, but it yeah, was yeah. that point where you just got excited enough about it that you started noodling at home all the time yeah. you know, uh, that I saw like a, a huge jump uh, for you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I um, it kind of, it gets, uh, it gets almost addicting in a way where um, it, 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 from my experience, I just, I feel very, um, I feel very real. Um, yeah. If that makes sense, it, it's a it's a strange way to put it, but I, I feel uh, I feel very connected um, to myself when I connect with the scene partner. So, yeah, it's it, when you get kind of into the 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 work of it and and um, enjoying it, it 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 gets very uh, you, you start to really want to practice at home. Um, so, kind of going back to somebody you know, who's just starting, right? If you imagine you know, you're talking to your younger self, you know, is there you know, one or two pieces of sort of key advice that you would go back and, and offer from this place of wisdom and experience you've got now? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think, um, I think what I would say is, well, the first thing is, um, to celebrate the small wins mm. because it's it's so easy to like get caught up in the rejection and the you know the um the babble of like the industry um and i've seen a lot of actors kind of go into like a, a, a kind of a stuck headspace um because of all that stuff and what I've found really helpful in, in battling that is celebrating even the small wins. Like 
I mean, at the beginning, even, even if you get called into the room to audition, that's a huge win. That's like, they, they wanted you in the room. They, they see you as a potential for the character. So um, if you get called in, that's a win. If you, um, if you make a breakthrough in class, that's a win. Um, if, you, if you experience an impulse or an emotion in a scene that you haven't before, that's a win. Um, and if you, uh, the second thing that I would say, which is kind of along those lines is uh, not, not forgetting the reason that, that you got into it um, and looking for that spark in every, every audition that you do, every, every scene that you tackle for class. Um, it's, it's really, uh, it's again with like all the industry babble and all of that, like it's easy to get caught up in that and like, what can I do besides acting to help my acting career? And like, yes, there are other things. There are other things that are important and, um, there are other skills, but in the end, like, I think self-care as, as an actor has to involve giving time very um, consciously to um, practicing the thing that, that you love to do, which is acting itself. And uh, yeah, that's I, just prioritizing that. Like that's, that's the thing that matters most. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, now I could continue to ask Julia questions for this entire thing. Um, but why don't we open it up, you know, uh, in case any of you have a, a burning and you know, direct question, like, what do you want to ask Julia? You know, we've got her for another 10 minutes. All right, Christina, you want to jump in? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, how did you manage school while you were like practicing acting and everything? Like, how did you make time to do acting while you had like school and everything? Yeah, um, it's not easy. <laughs> Uh, which I know probably isn't what you want to hear, but um, yeah, I, um, I, I had kind of a, a deal with my mom that I, I had to keep my grades uh, up reasonably so, um, not like straight A's, but um, I, I think it was, we, we agreed that if I got a B, then I'm, I'm okay. Um, if I, if I kept my grades up, then, uh, then I could still dedicate all this time to acting. And if, if my grades ever went below a B, then it's like, okay, time to, you know, time to maybe cut back on the time that's put towards acting, put that towards school. Um, so I was, I was very motivated towards school because it was, uh, I could only keep acting if I did well in school. So that helped a lot <laughs> having that kind of agreement. Um, Another thing, another thing that was a little bit of a challenge, uh, it can be hard to, it can be hard to have a social life uh, when you're in school, when you're in, in elementary school or high school. Um, and it can be especially hard if you are spending so much extracurricular time on this thing that maybe none of your other friends at school are doing. So they maybe don't understand. Um, and I've found that a little bit of a, a struggle uh, there, I remember a lot of times when uh, I would have to say no to sleepovers or hanging out with people um, just because like I have acting class the next day or like, yeah, uh, auditions would come up last minute and I have to cancel on people last minute. Um, so that can be a little bit of a challenge, but for me personally, I, um, I loved it so much that it was uh, the sacrifices that I made for acting were worth it because I might not have been able to do those sleepovers with my friends, um, but I got to go to my acting class and spend time with the people there who I also love, like my friends. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little bit of a, it's a priorities thing. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and it, it can be hard as well when you, uh, when you spend weeks or months uh, out of school filming, um, but they do provide a tutor for you on set if you are uh, if you're still in high school. So they make it they make it manageable. Um, there are there are a lot of uh, 
there are a lot of laws and regulations around that uh, to make sure that you don't really fall behind in school if you're on set. So that's, uh, that's really helpful as well. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Okay, uh, we've got time for you know, one, maybe two more questions. You know, please, please jump in with your questions, and if you're drawing a blank, you know, then we'll, I'm sure we can find the good things to ask Julie to talk about. Uh, what about you, Jade, uh, Candy, Amy? You know, anything that you want to know firsthand while you've got Julie to draw on about that process of like being a young person who's passionate about acting, you know, and moving your way into the industry for the first time. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what was it like tr making the transition from like in-person auditions to Zoom auditions and like more self-tapes, I guess? Because I feel yeah. like there'd be such a, I guess, a shift in how you would audition from like a computer screen rather than actually being in the room with them. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's very strange right now. <laughs> um, I'm still getting used to it. It's um. Yeah, so um, auditioning in person is, uh, there, there, there's pros and cons to both in-person auditions and self-tapes. Um, what I like about in-person auditions is you get that, you get that uh, in-person connection and the, the energy of the other people in the room. Um, you, get to, uh, you get to ask questions, um, which is something that I really miss because uh, I, I work very collaboratively um, as an actor. I, I like to talk about like the character and the motivations. And um, if I have an audition with no context, maybe like, what's the backstory? Like, what's the relationship with this character? Because I don't have the script. Um, so I, I miss being able to ask questions in the uh, in the audition room. Um, I, on the other hand, though, there are things that I don't miss about in person auditions. Um, the waiting room can be difficult. Um, it can be intimidating. Um, I, when you, when you self tape at home, you, you also have, um, you have more takes. You can, you can kind of play around until you're happy with it. Um, the other side of that is that sometimes you just feel like you're never going to be happy with it and you don't know when to stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think, I think the biggest differences, uh, the biggest things that I've had to do to adjust, um, I've had to kind of, uh, upgrade my self tape um, kind of space. I uh, I was doing some self tapes before because uh, even before COVID, certain auditions were self tapes if they were for um, projects that were shooting in other locations. So I would self tape a lot for uh, indie films that were um, that were being shot in Ontario or like shows that were in in America. Um, but I've had to kind of, I've, I've realized that during COVID, everybody kind of like, you know, got the new equipment, like set up a fancy new rig. And I was like, oh, okay, I need to, I need to like step up my game. So um, I've kind of, I've kind of uh, worked a little bit on that. Um, and the Zoom auditions, um, the Zoom auditions are weird. I've, I never did a Zoom audition before this. Uh, Cause usually right now, um, the Zoom auditions are, are what would be callbacks. So they're, they're very strange. Um, I, think, I think it's, uh, I've, I've been kind of doing it kind of, I've been setting it up kind of like a self tape, um, just using my phone, putting it on airplane mode and, uh, or do not disturb. Um, but yeah, it, it, is, it is awkward. I, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't find it awkward. Uh, and I, I think, it makes it a little bit um, easier to know that everybody's finding it awkward because it's one of those like, you know, we're all in this together is kind of what everyone's saying. Um, but it's true, it's, we're all in this together. We're all just trying to keep making art and doing the best we can. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any final questions for Julia folks? Okay, I have one final question. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, I don't know if you already answered this, but like, how do you get into character? Like what methods do you use to get into character? Like how do you That's get into a role of like really like getting in there? Yeah, um, 
it depends on the character. I don't really have uh, I don't really have a, a set in stone process that I follow every time. Um, it, I know it would be easier to answer this if I did. <laughs> I wish I could tell you like these are the steps that I take every time and it work and it works like every time. Um, but unfortunately it's it's not it's not very much like that. <laughs> um, I I use different tools for different characters because, every person is different. Um, and so every character is gonna be very different and they're gonna have different, uh, what I call like points of access. Um, and it's kind of about, you know, using the different tools that I have, using the different keys and, and kind of letting my intuition tell me um, what's, gonna, what's gonna click with this one. Um, some of the things I've used in the past, uh, I use music. Um, music helped me a lot, especially um, during when I was shooting The Killing. I used music a lot. Uh, I've, I've used, um, you know, voice, voice and body work uh, is really helpful to me sometimes. I've used like scrapbooks, vision boards uh, for visual characters. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll try, I'll, I'll like take a little bit of a dive into whatever the characters are interested in. So um, like I, I played uh, in Weirdos, um, I played a character who would take photographs a lot. And uh, so I got a, I got one of those like little bit old fashioned cameras and I, I started taking pictures and, and trying to see the world kind of through her lens. Um, there was one character that I did uh, uh, where I, I actually the the characters were were doing macrame for a lot of the a lot of the film, and uh, I, I had to learn how to macrame <laughs> because I was going to be doing a lot of it. Um, so that was that was really fun as well. Um, yeah, it's there's there's different things that that work in different characters, and um, I think the biggest takeaway is uh, just follow your intuition. Usually, it's right. Um, it's it's a it's an impulse thing. A lot of a lot of creative work is, is an impulse thing, but yeah. Beautiful. Um, so I want to circle back uh, just as a sort of closing thought to something you said about uh, self-care, you know, and self-care yeah. for actors being like what, you know, brings you back to the art and what brings you back to the thing you love. So uh, do you want to finish us up with some of the things uh, that like keep you grounded in what you love about acting right now in this sort of strange time in the world? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a big one. I, what I try to do always is to follow my curiosity. And I feel if I'm following my curiosity in my creative work that I will, um, that's, that's worked for me to avoid burnout. And, uh, it's, it's kept me from doing what I've sometimes fallen into in the past, which is like doing a lot of what I think I should be doing and kind of neglecting what I'm really, uh, what really excites me. So recently, um, recently I've started taking singing lessons and that's been, that's been super helpful with acting as well. And, uh, you know, there, there are days when like all I do, all I do in terms of like working on my acting, um, my craft is just, I do my vocal warmups. And that's it. And like, sometimes that is just fulfilling enough. And I'm like, okay, I, I've, I've tuned the instrument a little bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think uh, whatever, whatever is like igniting that spark that you felt when you first were like, maybe I, maybe I want to be an actor. Um, whatever makes you feel that again, that's the thing to be doing. It's like, if you get really excited with, um, I don't know, maybe Shakespeare is like super interesting to you right now, or or maybe a, a different playwright, or I don't know, but whatever, whatever is kind of, um, yeah, lighting up that spark and and uh, making you curious. Yeah, uh, beautiful. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again today, Julie. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This Every, was great. Everybody, thank unmute you so yourself much. and uh, you know, give Julie some love before we sign off. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This is awesome. Thank you so Thanks, much. Julia. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.